as the general elections draw closer. Politicians have again returned to the electorate to tie those ends. On politics in the Emirate, we take you through the minds of the aspirants. We ask questions that hit the ambitions, intentions, and aspirations. It's politics in the Emirate, showing on Stemma TV. My name is Azan Olaiwala Shuai. People call me Shuai Larona, and some people call me Shai. I'm from Kora State, uh, Muru Luka Gome to be precise, that is uh, from Lawa Ward. Uh, I grew up in Lorraine here. I did my primary school, uh, secondary school in Lorraine here. I did part of my tertiary institution in Lorraine, but uh, I think precisely I went to, uh, what do you call it, this satellite campus. Mm -hmm. so, uh, which is a for polytechnic, which I had my ending on the HMD then public administration. So um, basically I'm into entertainment. I'm a politician. I'm into entertainment business. At the same time I'm into real estate business and you know you know Nigeria now. Partially. Mm -hmm. I'm a contractor too. So that's what I do. That's why very impressive, sir. From all you said, um, it's, you can tell that you have been in the states for quite a while. Yeah, I grew, I grew, I grew up here, wow. and I've lived all my life here in Kano State, especially in Lagos. Okay, which now leads me to asking you, why have you decided to contest at this point in time? Yeah, actually, what happened is not me per se. I think let me just say my family, and my family, my grandfather, everybody have, you know bring fans of Saki right from day one. So I grew up knowing my dad, my uncles, everybody, you know, talking about Saki Saki. And my dad is a politician at the same time. My dad used to write a lot of articles for late Dr. Luciana Saki. So I used to watch him, you know, writing those articles and then talk about Saki a lot. So through my dad, I fell in love with Saki too. So growing up, I think 2000 and 1999, after we had uh, Nawa's election, I think I was part of the people that, you know, work for Lawa. So, you know, but immediately, you know, Lawa won the election. After two years, I think the, the relationship between um, Baba Saraki, that's Dr. Lushala Saraki, Tonswa, due to some, you know, best reason. And, Everybody need to like if decided okay which part do you want to go which part do you want to go we decided to go with Baba Saraki then so that was when uh, Dr. Bukula Saraki came in to contest for governor of Kora State and I happens to have a brother too at the same time that was there uh, that was contesting then that's yes that is late Barrister Moody Jimba so I happens to work with him so from there I think I got to know. Dr. Bukola Saraki very well, his way of life, you know, the way of thinking, you know, like the way he... Go very close to Yeah. Me. So I fell in love with his style of politics, you know. So since then, I decided to emulate him kind of one way or the other what he does. So... So it's safe to say now that your family influenced your... Yeah, yeah, yeah. My family, my, my dad, my, my dad, my uncles, everybody, you know, they're, they're, they're into politics, so they influence me. Mm. So the thing is, politics aside, you know, entertainment aside. So because I'm kind of person that I so much fell in love with entertainment. That's very good. Um, now you're a member of the opposition party. What do you think are your chances of winning this election, this coming election? What do you think? Are your uh, you see, the the truth is this: uh, it's just like a a, let me say boyfriend and girlfriend when you have a girlfriend you understand you've been dating for maybe like three years four years five years you know sometimes i like the girl or the guy want to get somehow you want to get out of each other kind of way i wanted to like try somebody else and that's why the proverb that says there's a proverb that says that you know when you don't lose something sometimes you don't know the value of what you're losing so you see Sometimes in life, God just wants to test us. Either the people that is ruling you 
or you the electorate for you to know the value of what you have you understand people are you know there people started to like getting tired of you know Bukola Saraki thinking of you know a dictate you understand they don't want good for that reason all these kind of things and God said and God says okay the best thing is let me take this guy we'll let him rest let some other person come out you know let him see let the people see how it is I think now a lot of people have realized that and the thing is they prefer you know bookie style than other style and let, let's not forget one fact you see in politics when you don't have somebody that leads you don't let me use the word good for that reason you understand because there's some people that practice for that good for that reason but they do it in a very right way in a very positive way mm -hmm. with an open hand why some people do it in the wrong way you understand you see when you don't have a leader that controls a party you understand you see a lot of crisis look at what is happening in APC today yes a lot of crisis here and there mm -hmm. because there's no lead so nobody that's leading them and if you're talking about good for the reason who is really practicing it right now and doing a very very wrong way is the APC look at the governor for example look at all the primaries they did have you ever had it I've never had it since I was born since I've started practicing politics that someone will win an election primary election and they will be changing then immediately again you know it's it's quite wrong you understand the the thing is the thing I see right now is like the world is going right now is it's not that it's more foreign. You understand? You know, it's like what they're doing now is I'm more, no more foreign. So the thing that's going around right now is like, okay, if you don't you're not very careful, I will take it away from now, I will give it to you. And I, from there I respect Bookie for something again, which I've realized that, but a lot of people out there doesn't understand how it works. You being a leader at the same time is not an easy job. It's not. And you have a lot of stakeholders that you know that you look up to to you know put in strike which some of them would like to you and you as a leader you don't even know you can't be everywhere your eyes can't be everywhere you understand so the thing is like for example when i got my ticket from my from my from my own constituency i have a lot of obstacles some were like what did they come is it because you spend the money you know but the man saw the quality in me and he made sure that the process, you know, of electing someone for my constituency was plain. And that is why, that is how I emerged. And it's about majority that wanted me. Because of what? Because of my intention, the, my blueprint. You understand? What I, you know, my agenda, she gets. So, the man saw it and then I was like, okay, you can't just, no, let's, no, let's make it plain. Uh, anybody that get a ticket, fine. And I was like, I got a ticket. So, you see, it's not that maybe Dr. Bukola is just unpick anybody. He didn't. With this or kind of what we call, you know, like, um, what is it, about camera, camera or something like that's what we did. You understand? For us to choose who and who, who is the best candidate. So it doesn't, it's not that maybe Bookie choose for anybody. No, it doesn't. You understand? And even though before, it's not that he choose, it's not about, for example now, you, you are one of my highs in maybe one local government. Mm -hmm. And I believe you are one of the strong stakeholders. So I believe, you know, I believe in your judgment by, you know, you trust yes, you know, by, you know, picking a candidate, by giving us a candidate, you know, okay, this is the best candidate from this Look at this constituency or look at government. Just an example. I give it to me. I will, I will listen to you. That was what happened there. Isn't that maybe the the leader, Dr. Bukulasa, we just intentionally and pick anybody? He doesn't do that. With what I've seen, you understand. So the thing is, if you look at someone that's really present in good federalism right now, I know I think it's APC people that are really doing that. And I especially then they have like two factions now, which the other faction have moved to SDP. So let me see AA faction. They are the ones that are really practicing that good for that reason right now. I see you are very keen on 
in the political space and it's very safe to say that um, Dr. Kukosar is one of the mentors. Yeah, yeah. I don't think there's anybody in that is in line of politics in this in, in this world, not in Nigeria alone, that doesn't have a mentor. Okay, so now what I want to ask now, aside Dr. Kukosar, are there any other people in this political space that you look up to or that are mentors to you? Yeah, one of the person I look up to. You know, it's most of the people that I look up to in this politics arena is uh, it's late already. I'm talking about uh, my late uncle, that's late by Stamudin Jimba. If you're talking about people that practice free politics, good poli transparent one, that you know, and that is one of I think one of one of the soldiers Dr. Bukolas lost. Because these are the kind of people that they are very, very transparent. I watched him the way, you know, he governed his people when he was in position because he was the former special assistant on youth empowerment. This is somebody that every morning and night he see that he drafts a lot different kind of memo. And there's a kind of man that when you come to his office, he has that you come with a proposal, he doesn't steal your proposal. He presents your proposal to the governor and he makes sure that he follows his top and when the proposal is approved, it makes sure you are the one that, you know, executes the job. Not like all those miscrimes who have in politics. These are the part of the people that affected, you know, uh, Governor Fatai government, you know. Because if you look at Bukit's first turn or second turn, it was wonderful. And we, we during Bukit's turn or administration, there's a lot of very intelligent, smart people, you know, that that were working for him. So you see, the thing is that happens is some people because they don't have anything upstairs. When you go to the office, you present the proposal to them. They steal it. They change it. They remove your name, and they put their name. You understand? And those are the kind of things that is not. It doesn't encourage the youth. He doesn't even encourage anybody to, you know, say, okay, I have something good now to present to the state government to execute. But mostly youth, mostly everybody have an intention that, okay, when I do that, they will, they will steal it, no mm -hmm. You understand? You have to see your project flying out there, and there's nothing you can do about it. So, by Stamudin, lead by Stamudin, you know, somebody that, you know, was very transparent and was really encouraging the youth. And I want to follow that full step. You understand? I want to be transparent in anything I do because, you see, one thing I want people to believe in this life is nobody know when. We are going to die. So the best thing for us to do good, you understand? Any little good we can do, we should do it. You understand? Because you should, every time you are doing anything, you should be thinking about that six feet. Mm -hmm. It's only you that's going to be there. Who's going to be with you? So it's your hand work that's going to judge you, that's going to guide you. Mm -hmm. So that's it. So if you're talking about my mentor, apart from Dr. Bukola Saraki, led by Samu Jimba. Mm -hmm. Now, Simon, your slogan says a new beginning for us. What should you use of the constituency expect when you, from you when you get into power? Yeah, actually, one of the reasons why I've, you know, I've had this intention of running for an elective position was after I practiced my politics in the Lauren before, before I now moved down home to more local government. Lawa to be precise, that's my word. But I discovered that in more local government, there's a lot of poverty in our local government. A lot of youths are not educated. There's a lot of children that are, are really out of schools. Yes, and this really baffled me. At this 23, that this this, general, this century we have, we're talking about 2023, for God's sake. You know, when you know, the world is moving, you still find out in some communities there's no light, <laughs> no water. So people does not even know what is going on in the world. You understand? You still find some kids, you know, no, they are not in school. They know nothing about education. And this is thing that is killing us immoral. And some politicians are using it, you know, they're taking advantage of it by, you know, coming to town, getting some goodies, you know, going you know, just give those people some little speech stipends, lying to them, you understand, and uses them, which is wrong. So I decided that, okay, let me come out, let me contest if 
by the grace of God, if God give me the power, I so God supports don't supported me to win this election. Surely, I think I'm going to facilitate a lot of things down to my constituency. If you, I'm going to look at into the education level from the primary level to the secondary level. You understand? Mm -hmm. And at the same time, well, I'm, I'm going to be organizing a youth summit. Mm -hmm. That is, you know, that we are going to enlighten most of the youths. You understand? Way forward. And we're going to like it's part of just like what I did with Barista Mediji by 2003 during Dr. Bukula's, uh regime as a governor of Kora State. We we facilitated a lot of projects such as you know we empowerment program, you know, like job seeking job here and there for our youth, which I think we did very well there. Yes, now part of what we did then was sometimes. We liaise with some institutions, like for example, University of Florida, for example. We liaise with the VC then that, you know, we have like, I think up to like under slot or something like that, that we do give the youth. So automatically, is you know, instead of you going through a lot of stress, you know, and you have, the moment you have that cut of mark, you understand, you are qualified. So, you know, we, we, we rule out a lot of admissions through that collaboration with University of Florida that, that we have some banks to them that will have a collaborations with through you know the state government that you know they help us to employ some of the youth in the banking industries and then i think then to dr bukola so like he brought in then go to flower me it was through our office that we did the process of the employment the employment process so the thing is i have this all i this idea and this experience very well which i be when i get to office you know i'm going to use that experience to seek for job for the youth for my constituency and there's going to be some kind of empowerment that we're going to do mm -hmm. we are not going to do any, any just anyhow empowerment you know see some politicians that will tell you they're doing empowerment they tell you we're doing soap empowerment maybe some people will say uh, giving out machine you don't give machine to the wrong people mm -hmm. like for example now i'm maybe if i'm a mechanic i decide you want to do an empowerment program you are not giving me a sewing machine it's of no use for me. Definitely, what, what does that mean? I'm going to sell it. So it's better we look, we follow the due process by, you know, having the right data of youths, okay, and look at their discipline. What are you doing? What can you do? And part of what I wanted to do is, uh, I want to liaise with, uh, I think they call it NDE, National Directorate of Employment. It's, you know, that they will help you. You can choose some youths. Maybe look at, for example, 20 youth or 50 youth. That will take to them. They will help us to train them. Yes, I think something like that is in the in is in the state too at along at the Shepo Road. So we we'll look at they help us to train them in different sk skills. Mm -hmm. Now after the skills, they will give us a certificate. Then we will not empower them. Mm -hmm. So I think it's better for you to empower people in the right channel rather than the wrong channel. Mm -hmm. So when you empower people on the right channel, definitely you know it's, it's going to yield good result. Mm -hmm. So those are the part of the little roses where you know we are looking at that we're going to do for the youth. Wow. Yeah, that's really impressive, sir. Um, now looking at the face of PDP in Kwara State, that's what we call us out. He has lost his um, presidential bid. Mm -hmm. And what do you think his next steps are going to be? For him? Yes, for him. Ah, uh, well, I can't read his mind, you know. But the truth is, I believe uh, Dr. Bukola Saraki is a very strong man. He's a very mature man when it comes to politics. Uh, and like I said earlier on, it's somebody that I, 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 follow, I try to follow his footsteps. You know, you hardly say making a wrong comment on any social media, even when people are saying something negative about him. Uh, I believe Dr. Bukola believed that God, man propose, I mean, God's dispose. You understand? He only tries his best. You know, he wished to, you know, change things in this country. And if you look at it very well, out of all the uh, aspirants that comes out, not only in PDP and including APC, one of the person that have a very good blueprint for this country, and I can make a lot of changes in this. Because the truth is, this country has been damaged more than what you and I can imagine. And someone that can, like what you used to say, that can lay that foundation, you know, for the next, you know generation coming in to follow that full step is someone like him. Yes, I thank God that I think even though the person that God to take care of right now, Dr. Tukwabubaka, you know, is somebody that, you know, 
even though he's hold, he's 32. So I think the man is really planning ahead, you know. Yeah, yeah. so it's fine. So, sir, do you think your party is doing enough to return to power in the state? Yeah, we're doing all we can to, you know, get back to power in the state. And one thing I want people to realize is this. I'm saying Nigerians. We Nigerians. Not only the state. You see, they said once beaten, twice shy. You see, PDP have realized a lot of things. There are mistakes too. But if you look at PDP 16 years, compared to APC 7 years plus right now, you would know that there's a lot of differences. Even though APC 7 years plus is like hell compared to PDP. You understand? Compared to PDP, either from the federal level to the state level. Look at the state, for example. You cannot find any one single capital project in this state. You understand? So, a lot of things. So, the thing is, if PDP come back to power, PDP will not, will not want to mess it up, the opportunity up in the sense that they want to perform for people to trust them back again. You understand? You know, it's just like, like a wife that misbehave to her husband. So, you know, people are begging on her behalf and they all end up forgiving her, accepting her back. You know, she wants to prove herself like, okay, I don't want to misbehave. Aha, mm -hmm. uh -huh. so, so that she can win the trust of the husband. So that is how, you know, that's the case of PDP to the, to the electorate. So the thing is, you see, any sensible person that want to vote right now is supposed to vote for PDP because the thing is, they will, do, they will not want to mess up. They want to fix things back and, and get a trust. So, either from the state or to the you know, uh, uh, national level, you understand? Anybody that happens to get that, you know, that happens to win, or, but let me just rephrase it, by the grace of God, for our, our candidate in Kwara State wins this election and national level win the election, I believe they're going to perform. So for you now, what are the three important um, issues that will be your priority when you assume office? When I assume office? Ah, uh, my three things what I'm really looking at right now, I've mentioned one before. I'm really going to look into empowerment programs. You understand? Part of my program is going to be like, you know, the youth empowerment. That's going to come across, I that for the male and the female. But I'm, I'm, I'm going to concentrate on the female more. Like, I'm looking at uh, the widow empowerment. I'm looking at the single parent empowerment. And I'm looking at handicap empowerment programs. You understand? It's going to be part of my program. And secondly, um, I'm going to look at way I can facilitate a lot of projects. Because that's the major work of an of, of assembly members for you to facilitate project to your constituency. So the thing, is, the thing is, I'm going to listen to my people. We're going to be having this town hall meeting, which I will listen to my people, look at, you know, what they want, what's their grievances, what are their requests, which my priority is to take it to the house, you know, start and fight for it. So my majorly, my three most important things is to facilitate projects to my constituency, then empowerment program for the youth, you understand? So... Speaking of the youth now, what are your words of advice to them? Is it, the truth is this. Huh? The regime of Bamo Fuen is gone. Hmm? Take, I give you. Because that's the mentality of some people. You understand that? Okay? This ticket has been given to me on the platform of so, so, so. So, I have no business with the electorate. Yes, now because you think that after giving you that ticket, automatically you won the election. Is is that doesn't happen again right now? And I think the thing is this: we, the youth of this state, or let me say Nigeria generally, our power is our PVC. Our people make us to decide who we want. And the moment all of us in this country, the youth in this country, we have our PVC with us. And we can decide who we want to govern us in this state or in this country. You understand? That is when we politicians will learn how to take our job serious by doing the right thing for the electorate. 
you understand? Because the moment you know you're not performing, you understand? You will never get a second chance. She get it. So that PVC is something that is very, very important to every youth to have. Any youth that wants changes in this country, any youth that wants changes in this state must go and get is or a PVC. It's very, very important. So that will make you to decide who you want to vote for. So now finally, to those that have lost hope in the um, electoral, um, electoral process of the country yeah. and are feeling, feeling reluctant to go get their PVCs, what do you have to say to them when finally? The thing is, you see, we don't need to lose hope in the electoral processes. You know, the thing is, it's a gradual process. Things are beginning to be changing bit by bit. Yes, we need to be optimistic, you know, about our electoral process. The thing is, we shouldn't give up. And that's why I said everybody should go and get a PVC. And you look at the right candidate. You see, the moment, one thing I believe in life is this. You see, when they say, when there's a candidate, either from APC or from PDP, for example, let me use my constituents as a, a, as a case study. For example, there's going to be an assembly member coming out from APC, right? Yeah. Uh, I'm coming from out from PDP. I believe the youth of that constituency should just do what? Sit, organize a debate. You understand? When you organize a debate, okay, what do you have for, what do you have for us? Yeah. Let that be the way. When you have a debate, then you look at, okay, it shouldn't, it shouldn't be about party things alone. Sometimes it's something is about it should be about the candidate, because the moment you realize that okay, this this, this is the person that have something good for us. This is someone that have something good to offer us. Then it should be the person everybody should vote for. So from there, you know that anybody that's going to be coming out must be somebody that's competent, and everybody that wants to come out will be thinking of okay, what can I do? Believe me, sincerely, go and ask right now. Mostly everybody that wants to come out. For any elective post right now, ask them what's their blueprint. Is that they want to go and pick something from somewhere, a blueprint from somewhere? It's not like something that's coming original, at, original genuinely from their hearts that they wanted to do. Like if you ask me today, tomorrow, any day, any time, I don't need to bring out a book or anything. I can tell you, you know, I can tell you my blueprint. I can tell you my agenda. This is what I have for my people, and this is what I want to do. You understand? There's a lot, but I just, I, I don't need to let the cat out of the box right now. So that's just the thing. And I don't, everywhere I've been going, I've been doing my underground work, my door-to-door -door campaign. I've never made any promises to anybody. Making promises to people is like you're putting yourself in fire, in danger. When you have a good intention, have something good in your heart that you want to do. Just let people know that they should give the opportunity. And you promise you will not disappoint. Let it be like a surprise to them, everything you wanted to do. But ah, I will do this route for you because it's like a national anthem now to, to the electorate. Ah, if you look at it now, I will tell you, I will, I will, I will, I will, I will fix security. We will call them, I will do this. Out. No, you see, so those are the things. And um, people are even tired of this. People same. repeating the same thing. So I rather, you know, I'm my own style of, you know, campaign this time around. I'm not even waiting for the major campaign. The best thing you can do is on the ground. Go to door to the grassroots. From there, you listen to people, you you know, you yeah, listen to people yearning, you know, what is their grievances. Then you talk to them. You give them that hope back. From there, you know that people that, okay, I've, I agree with you, I already support you, are there. But the major campaign, you find different kind of people that you, you don't even know what is their grievances. You're just there on the stage, talking, shouting, moving around. No, it doesn't work that way. So. It's been an insightful time to start. Yes, we wish you all the best. Thank you. Thank you very much. As the general elections draw closer, politicians have again returned to the electorate to tie loose ends. On politics in the Emirates, we take you through the minds of the asteroids. We ask questions that hit the ambitions, intentions, and aspirations. It's politics in the Emirates, showing on STEMA TV.